Hello, this is um, project one for Mechanical Design 2. And uh, my team consists of myself, Corey Miller, um, my partner Stefan, and Christopher. <clears throat> so our topic was um, shoe brake design in automobiles. And um, we did a little research on the topic and we found that the braking system is one of the most important um, elements in a, in a car. So um, with this being said, <coughs> um, it's very important to make sure that the design is well, well thought out before the, um, the brakes are put onto a car. So um, the car's brake system must, must keep up with the car's performance as improvements to speed, acceleration, and power are being made. And um, there are mainly two types of, of brakes um, being produced right now. These are shoe brakes and disc brakes. Um, <clears throat> a little history on the shoe brakes. They were first um, developed in 1902 by Louis Schwenot. And um, at this time, they were very basic mechanical systems. And then later on, improvements were made to them. Um, at first, the brake pads used were uh, made of a material called as asbestos, but um, later on they found out that um, this was a hazardous material, so they end up, end up having to switch to switch materials, and now most um, brake pads are made of um, ceramic compounds with co um, copper fibers meshed in, and these are non-hazardous. Um, another improvement made to brakes is the automatic self-adjuster, um, because as, as the brakes would wear down, they would get less and less efficient, so instead of having to adjust them yourselves, it would automatically do it for you. And um, current, current days, um, the shoe brake design is, is mainly used in rear brakes, and disc brakes are um, on the front. There's two different types of categories of drum brakes. The leading trailing and the twin leading. Lead trailing is the most common design. It's moved by one wheel cylinder and it's hinged at the same point. The twin leading is moved by two wheel cylinders hinged at opposite points. The twin leading is not as efficient as the, the leading trailing one because in reverse it's not, it doesn't stop as well. The brake shoe, the main components of the brake assembly is the brake shoe, the wheel cylinder, the brake drum, the back brake plate, the back plate, the springs, and the pins. The brake shoe is made up of two pieces of sheet steel welded together. The components of the brake shoe are the lining table, the web, the nib, and the brake lining. The web is like a crescent shape over here, and it has holes in it to secure the pins and uh, springs. There are several types of brake linings which manufacturers seem to prefer using metallic and ceramic for, for their brake, brake shoes. Um, ceramic is the preferred brake shoe for cars because of its ability to dissipate heat and increase the stopping um, abilities of the vehicle. Next is the wheel cylinder. The wheel cylinder is used to move the brake shoe against the brake drum. Two pistons inside the wheel cylinder are expanded outwards towards the brake shoe when the hydraulic pressure from the brake master is applied during braking. Once the braking has stopped, the pistons are returned inside of the wheel cylinder by um, because of the return spring pulling it back in. The brake drum of the brake, brake assembly is usually made of, of cast iron. In some vehicles they use aluminum because it dips, dissipates the heat more efficiently. Although aluminum dissipates the heat and is lighter, it wears out a lot faster. So because of this, they usually rip it or bond the inner lining of the brake drum with iron. The back plate of the assembly is a very important component. Most components are fastened to it, uh, such as the wheel cylinder, the brake shoes, and the springs and pins. It has to be really resistant to uh, wear and be strong enough to withstand the forces applied on it from braking. Uh, during braking, the hydraulic fluid is pushed through 
the wheel cylinder, pushing out the brake shoes to the drum, causing friction, slowing down the vehicle. Hi, my name is Christopher, and I'm going to be talking about the conceptual design. The drum brake, which is the cast iron part of the drum brake that is placed over the shoe brake, has direct contact with the drum, uh, uh, with the drum <coughs> creating the necessary friction to actually stop the vehicle from moving forward or moving back. The heat produced from this friction leads to rapid heat, rapid heat transfers within the shoe. These rapid shoe brakes, based on the three-dimensional design, uh, based on the three-dimensional design study taken in uh, 2005, results from room temperature, which is at about 293 Kelvin to 439 Kelvin and about five seconds. Uh, the, that same report also showed that the temperature gradient within the flux increases as friction force increases as well. Based on this information, we decided as a team to actually insert holes around the surface of the shoe drum in order to allow for airflow through those holes. As you can see here, the holes are surrounded throughout the, the air drum throughout the brake drum and is about one inch apart, 0 0.5 offset throughout and about 30 holes approximately. <coughs> the holes are aligned at an angle in order to minimize the stress, to minimize the maximum stress yield between each hole. The hole, as I discussed before, is, is approximately 0 0.5 inches apart on the offset. The whole entire drum is actually 11 inches apart. The main base is 13 inches in diameter and the height of the of the drum is approximately 12 and the smaller inner diameter is approximately 11. <coughs> now the, some of the benefits of this design is the fact that we have direct air cooling. Because the wheel is spinning and we have constant airflow through it, the holes actually provide for good cooling throughout the shoe drum. So as the shoe drum is actually maintaining friction against the, against the drum, there's direct cooling, allowing for, for cooling not only on the holes itself, but also around the shoe drum, uh, allowing not just in particular uh, parts of the shoe will get cooled, but the whole entire shoe. Um, <clears throat> there's also increase of time due to the fact that there's, uh, you have a lower Instead of uh, at, uh, designing the shoe brake to be at a higher temperature, you can have it at a lower temperature, resulting in a longer lifetime. Because you can design at a lower uh, temperature, you can also have less expensive materials. Uh, <clears throat> and furthermore, that the reduced maintenance, you don't need to actually have it to be replaced as many times as you usually would. So in conclusion, um, <clears throat> in summary, after doing, after looking at the analysis, after looking at the uh, at the design. We did an analysis on the design, and as you can see, that we see that there's actually a fair distribution across the drum boat instead of having a concentration upon where the shoe brake is. We actually have it going no more than about uh, 300 Kelvin. <coughs> Despite the fact that our design does work, we cannot actually use it. It's actually an old design, and um, <coughs> that the new design is actually disc brakes. Uh, this brakes are actually the ones that are used. They usually use them for all four years, as stated before, and uh, it's basically uh, an old concept. This is why we don't have an actual future concept. Uh, we don't actually have a future concept on this because most of the time everything is this, uh, this brakes. So, um, thank you very much. This is pretty, uh, Team 3 and uh, Project 1.